almost done with the new gallery. It's not quite done, but it's, it's almost done. And what we're hoping to do is to make a video once a week about everything that's going on in the gallery. And we hope to put that video out every, every Tuesday, actually. So we'll have a video Tuesday and a video Friday. Well, for our first gallery update, I'm having a couple problems. One main problem in this tank right there. So let me just take you over there and show you real quick. The reef tank was just, it was doing so well, so well. I had like virtually no nuisance algae. Coral growth was okay. But what happened is when I added in, let's see if we can find it here. I added in two pajama cardinals, one over here, and then the other one's hanging out in the corner over there. And I also added in this blood red fire shrimp. And as soon as I added them in, check this out, this happened. I went from having no nuisance algae, none, to just gobs of it. I mean, especially up there near the top there. Let's look over here. I've tried manually removing this several times already and didn't really seem to help. And I know some of you are probably wondering right now, well, what are your water parameters? Let me just tell you that this tank has never had, ever really, any readable amounts of phosphates and nitrates. I've actually tried to raise the phosphates and nitrates in this tank, but to no avail. Pretty much my phosphates are just above zero. I mean, maybe even at zero, and my nitrates are maybe at at one. I don't know what to do, because my biggest problem here is, all right, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the tank. Good, right? That's a good thing to do, keep your hands out of the tank. But how do I get rid of nuisance algae growth all over the tank when I don't have any nitrates, I don't have any phosphates, my PAR levels are good, I don't have any excess nutrients. So I I, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm racking my mind about what to do. I mean, okay, so I could use something like a Brightwell razor, and that would probably help get rid of some of this, right? I mean, you, some of you guys have done that before, I've done it before, but I, I don't wanna put chemicals in into the tank if I don't have to. So I think I have a solution to this problem. At least I'm gonna try a solution. Let's, let me show you the other tank real quick. Here's the Lux 90, the clownfish harem tank that's in process. I'm not having necessarily a lot of problems. I added in those cleanup crew members, if you can recall. I added them in a few weeks ago now. Just some snails, sand sifting goby. But they're having a problem keeping up, I'm finding. I'm having to scrape the glass twice a day. I, I also went ahead and moved in. I had some anemones in this tank. And I just went ahead and I moved them into here, hoping they will do well. I'm not sure if they're gonna do well. I sure hope they're gonna do well. So there's a couple there and there's one in the back. I really just don't wanna put my hands into the tank because I think I'm gonna cause so many problems. So then how do you get rid of nuisance algae if you have no phosphates and you have no nitrates and you have a small tank that you can't put like a tang cleanup crew in? Well, here's what I'm gonna try, so let me show you. I've never done urchins before and I've never done emerald crabs, which is crazy. I know, how many years I've been doing this and I've never tried them. I think we'll put an urchin in here and an urchin in here, and then I think I have two emerald crabs. We'll do one, and we'll do one. I just I just don't know how to get rid of nuisance algae like that, to be honest, without resorting to some sort of chemicals, without resorting to manual removal, without resorting to tangs. As luck would have it, I think the shipment has just arrived. feel really super lucky living in the Palm Springs area because Live Aquaria ships out of LA. So it's super close and everything so far has arrived for me and it's been healthy and it's been alive. So let's check out this one. I really hope this one helps with some of the nuisance algae problems because um, yeah, my, my biggest question is like, how do you keep nuisance algae out of small tanks that can't have tangs? That, that's one of the biggest, and control your, control your nutrients. I have, I have. So it's, it's, it, it's challenging. So I'm gonna try new things in my effort to keep my hands out. So let's see if everybody turned in alive. Still warm, that's good. Let's start over here. A conch. What's next? We got 
Algae Rock Blue Tiny Hermit 5. Is there anything in there? Oh my goodness, look how small they are. I think he's gonna focus. They are so small. I always think that hermit crabs are gonna, are gonna be super helpful in cleaning up like hair algae, but I guess I never put enough in, or maybe I always get the really small ones. We got some yellow tip hermits that you can't see. These ones are maybe a little bigger. Maybe if I just add enough hermits, they will eat some of that hair algae. Maybe not. Maybe they're just more detritivores, or maybe, who knows. Conehead algae eater, shell, snail. These look like astria. <laughs> I guess they call them coneheads. Who knows, but these are Astria. I need quite, I should have gotten 10. I don't know why I only got five. That was silly, because I need at least five more. The clownfish harem tank, so. Nasarius snails, good. Mm, are you kidding me? I got what I get, 10 of the world's tiniest. I mean, these have to be the world's tiniest Nasarius snail. Look how small those are, holy bajoli. This is a little chilly. I better get this in some warm water here soon. A watermelon green ultra bulb anemone. Whoa. I've never had one of these and I'm hoping that I don't kill all my anemones. Oh, now we got the urchins. I got two of them. I got these, I got the hairy purple pink urchins because they're supposed to be smaller. That's still pretty good size, good Lord. Okay, one of them's gonna go in the fluval reef tank. The other one, I think I'll put it in the clownfish harem tank. Uh, and then I got two more things. What do I got? One emerald crab. Never had an emerald crab because I'm always nervous that they are going to eat my corals. But I need help. I need help. So we're going to try it. So be good. Be good to my corals. Don't eat them. I will feed you a lot. I promise. I promise to feed you a lot. As long as you promise not to eat my corals. And last up, we got red tip hermits. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Look at these guys. This is what I should be getting. Look how much bigger these are. These guys are good size. Now, maybe they'll eat the algae. I think they're pretty much carnivores, but maybe they'll help. All right, so I need to float all of these, and I think I'll just float them right here in the clownfish harem tank, just so that I have plenty of space. I'll turn the lights off. But do you know something that they never tell beginners? That they ever, ever tell beginners when you're drip acclimating? One, turn off your return pump, obviously, or you might run it dry. I mean, no one ever told me that. I had to learn the hard way. And number two, you need to have salt water made. Because if you're drip acclimating, you know, you're pulling out all that salt water. So if you just have like an auto top off system, it's just gonna be diluting your water and lowering your salinity. So you gotta make sure that you have salt water made. And luckily I have 32 gallons made so I can just top it off as I pull that water out. And lastly, this house right now is like 70 degrees. And if I spend an hour drip acclimating these things, you know, after I float them, the temperature in the bucket's gonna drop like four or five degrees. So I have personally thought it's better to drip acclimate a little bit faster so that the water temperature in the bucket doesn't change that much. So let's go ahead and put these in to the Lux 90 and just float them for a little while. I gotta go make dinner too. So I think these guys will be okay here for like the next hour and a half. And then we'll come back and we'll finish up. These have been temperature acclimating for about an hour and a half, which is more than enough time. I'm gonna try to, to drip acclimate them 30 minutes or under. And I was gonna do it in two separate tanks, but I think I'm just gonna drip acclimate in this tank. And then a few of the snails I'll move over to the other tank. The water parameters are probably somewhat similar anyway. So I think it'll work just fine. So time lapse here, we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Little trick for any beginners out there, double and triple check the bags once you empty them because oftentimes a snail, an anemone, a small hermit crab will stick to the inside of the bag and I have almost killed multiple things of livestock doing that. So just, just check. You know what else I forgot? You know what else I totally forgot? See, I, I always forget something. I don't know why. I forgot to turn off my return pump and my protein skimmer. So that's not great. And the controller. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Turned off. I really should just like keep a checklist so that I can do things in order. Back to the time lapse. Okay, I think they're all empty. Do you guys have any idea why <clears throat> some of the bags are just clear? 
And some of the bags have this like black plastic insert. I, I honestly have no idea. Cause like some of the hermit crabs came in clear and some of the hermit crabs came in some black. I don't know. Okay, <clears throat> I don't wanna make this last too long. I'm gonna do quite a bit of water. Since there's quite a bit of water in here already, I'm not gonna do like a few drops. I'm gonna do like a somewhat steady stream. I'll come and show you here in a minute. I think everything arrived in a really good shape. So, but I got two of these, of these, of these purple ones. There's one here. Look how pretty that one is. Gorgeous. Because evidently they don't get as big. Some of the other like tuxedo ones evidently can get like eight inches. So that's huge for a 20 gallon tank. Now let's see, we got the conscious trying to flip over. Maybe we can catch him. So we got so we got one emerald crab. I thought I got two, but evidently I just got one. And then we have some bigger hermit crabs over here, and evidently we have some plastic pieces floating around, which is not great. You can see kind of how fast right here I'm doing the, the drip acclimation. So I'm gonna go for about 30 minutes, so 27 more minutes, and then we'll come back. My wife bought me this waterproof meat thermometer because she forgot that I already had one. But I'm curious to know, we've been drip acclimating now for what, for 15 minutes? I wanna know like how far the temperature has dropped. Obviously the temperature is gonna drop a lot slower in this tank. It should be around 77, maybe a little bit less. Let's see, what do we got? 76.3, let's see what it is in here. Hopefully not too much lower. 75.6, so not quite a degree. So that's pretty good so far actually. Maybe another 10 minutes, I think. Look at this one, look at this urchin here. He is holding on to, those two snails, and then this guy over here was holding on to a hermit crab. <laughs> okay guys, a few more minutes, a few more minutes. Okay, we're gonna put the livestock into this tank first. I'm gloved up because I know what I want in here, and then the rest is gonna go right in here. And I'm gonna try to knock off, see this? He's holding on there. Okay, get off there. I've never had an anemone before. I'm a little worried that there's just not gonna be adequate hiding spaces. So we'll have to wait and see. So we're just gonna put this down. I don't know where, ah, I don't know where to put it. Maybe over, over here, maybe? Cause this could be, there's like some hiding spot, like a nook right here. We'll see if that works. And we're gonna put the other anemone in the main tank. Hopefully, look at me, look how much is attached. Ooh, we got the crab there too. Look at, look at this, look at that. He's holding onto the crab for dear life, the animal crab. So let's knock these guys off. Knock these off. Get him off too. Okay. Oh my gosh, get off of there. Okay. Just gonna put him on the rock work. And then I know I need, let's see, let's see the anemone, I guess. The anemone is going over here. I got a good spot. I'm trying to put the anemone in a spot right over here because it has a lot of par. And I think it's a good spot because it can sink its foot into that crevice. So I'm just gonna put them right here. I have all the pumps off. So I'm kind of just hoping she's gonna grab on and move where she wants to relatively quickly. Okay, I got, I got everything moved over, but I need to turn on my pump and everything in the clownfish harem tank. So let me see here. It's really easy with this app. Let's see here, ready? Let's see, we're gonna do return pump bi controller and leave that for now i just realized that because i took out quite a bit of water in there that i need to refill that so i'm gonna go watch real quick refill it as it gets low and then i'll come right back so the good thing i checked because it was almost running dry already okay i think we might be good now the skimmer that's gonna lower the water height in the sump a little bit more the gyre's ready there it is last up is the reactor one more check. Hopefully we're good. I got a goby in there, so I need to put the mesh screen on. Rondo. That was quite a bit actually, but everyone's in, everyone's happy. I'm not gonna turn the lights up. I'm gonna let everybody settle in for the evening, but don't click off yet, don't click off yet because I'm gonna come back in the morning, tomorrow morning, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to find all of that new livestock, and I'll show you a little montage at the end. But 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to Marine Depot and my first fish tank. And as always, we'll see you next week. Happy reefing, everybody. Be well. Oh,